I live in Los Angeles, California, and my company is Toy Guru. Look what I have! Yay! I have 13 nieces and nephews, and they Ooh. absolutely love playing with toys. I call them my playtime professionals. The problem is, they get bored with those toys really quickly. That is what inspired me and my husband to create Toy Guru. Toy Guru offers a cost-effective way, not only for parents to declutter their homes, but to keep their kids challenged and entertained. My husband and I don't have any kids yet, but we would definitely like to, and an investment from the sharks would mean that we would have the stability we need to start a family of our own. Now, when this when this uh, episode originally aired, I remember uh, thinking like, "Wow, this is a great idea," and and all that. And I remember talking to uh, one of one of the guys at our, our shop and him saying, "Well, yeah, but the thing is, is like the kids. He's like, my kids would want that toy. That's you know, after it's gone, they would like they would forget about it. Then all of a sudden, they would remember it. Um, and and yeah, I." <laughs> Now, now as a parent, all these years later, I, I kind of get it, uh, but we, we seem to do a pretty good job of being able to remove toys as more toys come in from holidays and, and birthdays and stuff. My dream for my company is that every family who has children who love to play with toys will use Toy Guru, and I really hope the sharks will help make that happen. Such a long walk in Hi there. guys, <laughs> my name is Nikki. My company is Toy Guru, and I am asking for one hundred thousand dollars in exchange for ten percent of my company. Ooh. Toy Guru solves a problem that millions of families face every day. I have eleven brothers and sisters, and I am lucky enough to have thirteen outstanding nieces and nephews, all under the age of eight. One thing that I've noticed is that my siblings are purchasing toy after toy for their kids. Their playrooms, their living rooms, their bedrooms are cluttered with toys that were purchased, played with for a few weeks, and now are left completely untouched. Yes, and ultimately those toys, while some of them we were able to sell on like Facebook Marketplace, ultimately a lot of those toys end up getting donated uh, or, or to Goodwill or given off to other families to, to, for their kids to play with. Toy Guru solves that problem and more. My company is the Netflix for toys. Consumers can go to my website. Everybody wants the Netflix of everything, right? Everybody wants that that subscription model of everything. Right. I don't know. Pick a plan that's right for them. A million Fill dollars. Fill their wish list with toys that they would like to receive, and I ship those toys right to their door. The great thing about my company is when their kids get bored with or outgrow those toys, they just throw them in the box, use the return label that we provided, send them back to us, and we send them their next box of toys. Can I just see your snail? I just want to see what the quality is like. Absolutely. And how many toys are in your catalog? We have over 300 different types of toys. What is the servicing of it? You know, the toys come back. Obviously, kids are not the cleanest, so you right. got drool on the kids toys. Are not you have clean. bed bugs. <laughs> would they have pee pee and poopoo on the toys? Maybe. <laughs> 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 well, I would hope that any, you know, self-respecting parent would at least clean the toy off themselves first before they go and send that toy out uh, to be picked up by somebody else. It has to be a process. People have to be hired to do this. With our company, uh, the cleaning is the most important. And so the, the toy gets sanitized. And sanitizer. shrink wrap it? And we shrink wrap it every time. Who um, else is doing this? The shrink thing? wrap looks, the, the shrink, wrap, uh, shrink wrap job there looks pretty, pretty good. Shrink wrap it every time. Uh, I would say, I, I like the sticker, the no yuck factor. Time, uh, Who else is doing this, Nikki? There is not another company that is doing this. It's so an interesting Nikki, what about idea. The damage? In six months, we had zero toys that we had to, to completely replace. If a child does break the toy, we sell it to the member at a discounted cost. Nikki, walk us through your business model. How do you make money? All of our members obviously pay a monthly membership fee. We have plans that start at $35 a month, and they go all the way oh. up to $89 a month. It's a lot. 35 a month? Right. And how many families Ooh. pay you that? Um, we did a soft launch with 500 members. It was basically like a test launch. They were all paying $42 a month for a box of toys that's worth over $200. So you're saying basically mm. it costs them about $500 a year. Exactly, which is great because the average family spends anywhere between $12 and $1,400 a year. And, and tell me but that's not a total that's that, that's that's I, I don't know if I totally buy that right because 
uh, when you say family, are you talking about like the brother, the sister, the mom, the dad, the grandparents, the, the friends, all buying toys uh, factored in there? Cause like, I, I know that we're not spending that level of money on on uh, toys for our kids, and they have plenty of toys thanks to other people buying them so many toys. In some cases, it's duplicates on duplicates on duplicates of toys. It's it's pandemo. It's toy demonium here. Again, the cost per toy box that you ship was two hundred dollars. Did you say? And what's your mm -hmm. cost on the toys that you're shipping? On the box of toys, it's going to be anywhere between fifty to eighty-five, ninety dollars. Two and a half months, you break even. Each right. Customer. That's exactly right. Mm. Mickey, how do you scale it up? How do you make this a big business? All we need is more marketing, more exposure. In the small amount of time that we had our five hundred customers, just by word of mouth, we got a waiting list of over a thousand people ready to. Mickey, sign. I think that's a great idea. Wow, five five hundred customers. I mean, you know, most companies, most people would be fortunate to get to that level of people interested in any kind of service that they are uh offering and that that's that there's a lot to be said for that so i'm gonna ding the bell there for that Let me ask you this. if the business begins to grow mm -hmm. does it suck up a ton of cash Mickey, for every million dollars of sales how much do i have to put in to buy inventory of toys just in toys just in toys sixty four thousand dollars that's going to cover a year of toys okay nikki i've heard enough hmm that's not, that's not the problem bad. is you don't have a million dollar business yet you're asking me to pay you as if your business is worth a million and it's not but i want to be an investor in it you have a good idea this is interesting so this is a leap of faith for me because I have to think you're going to grow this thing. Do you have any partners? You're doing this on your own? Um, my husband is a partner, and then I have a um, web designer and two online marketers that are partnering with me. How much do you own? I own 10% of the company. Oh, whoa, hold no, up, 10. hold up, hold up. 10%. <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 no. That's, oh, that's a, uh, that, oh, man. That that is that is crushing. That is crushing. Percent owns the rest. Where's the other ninety? We all own ten percent, and my husband owns the the bigger chunk of. Which is how much? He owns fifty percent. Why? What? 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 <laughs> Does your husband own a bigger chunk? Um, because I. Well, that's how we decided. How happily married are you? Um, <laughs> incredibly happily married. Why would you, who came up with this idea, give so much to your partner? Wow. Um, he's worked with me and blood, sweat, and tears with me every day. Do you have a prenuptial agreement? Yeah. <laughs> no, we don't. Oh. We were half and half when we started, okay? And you um, sold your piece to all these others and you didn't take any from him? The way that we worked the company is we wanted to make sure our family as a whole had the, the majority share, okay? But to Kevin's point then, why didn't you each give away yeah. some of your shares? Um, I don't know. Um, uh. I've had a bad history of speaking to people who don't have controlling of the company. I'm out. And I, I don't blame I don't blame Damon there. Uh, you know, she's not really able to she's representing people that she doesn't necessarily uh, she isn't those people. So, so uh, I don't understand why her husband, who uh, owns 50 percent of the company, wouldn't want to be out there. I mean, combined between the two, they own 60. They, you know, but even then. Uh, are they going to plan to give, you know, buy the other partners out there? Because if you own 60, they start giving out more percentage there. I mean, they're wanting to sell 10%. Is she selling her 10% for, for 100,000? Um, and ultimately, what is, uh, you know, 100,000 is, is probably not going to be enough money to get them uh, where they, they want to go. Thank you. You know, I, I wish you owned more, but nevertheless, I'd like to make you an offer here. I'll give you $100,000 for 35%. Oh, geez, uh, that's... <laughs> Rarely, Nikki, do I not ask for control, because I'm a control freak. Okay. But I trust you. You know what you're doing. You do. I can help you immensely in the toy space. Immensely. Well, if he, he, you know, but the thing is, is uh, depending where those shares come from, he 
pretty much will have control. <laughs> you will have control of the company. Not to mention the fact that when this uh, episode airs, this is season two. Uh, I think that's when ABC was still taking their two and a half percent or two some somewhere in the two percent range. So it's not just thirty five percent; it's like thirty seven or thirty seven and a half percent. So um, they. They, depending on where those shares come from, they might not actually have control. Do you have the right to sell 35%, Nikki? Um, I have the right to do whatever I want with the company, yes. So she, so she doesn't have uh, the percentage, but she has the control, which I, 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 I don't know. That still seems kind of odd to I had me. my eye on you when I came in here. I have my eye on you. Nikki, you are the first person ever to walk into the shark tank and actually be attracted to him. <laughs> you know what? I'm a tough interior, but I'm a southern girl, and I knew I could get him. She's right. He's blushing. He's just blushing. He really is. <laughs> Nikki, I've made you an offer. What are you going to do? Nikki, just, just before you, you answer that. Mark, I see this as an internet uh, logistics play. Would you be interested? I'd like to... Get in on this one with you. Absolutely a, a logistics play. Would you be interested in putting up more money? Absolutely. Because I think really this key issue for me, it's a website, social media, I'm in that world, but I think you gotta go faster than you're suggesting. I agree yeah, 100%. Because so, somebody somebody's gonna, you know, come in behind them and and you know, if the model works, they're gonna be like, Oh, I can do this too. And you know, depending on how where they're getting their supply of toys, it could be su you know super cheap. Like they could buy a wholesale or go to like Goodwill and buy toys for like a dollar a piece and get that cost way down. Or go to you know Craigslist and buy lots of toys uh, from people, clean them up and, and get them ready for for distribution. Kevin's offering a hundred for thirty five. I'm thinking we raise more money. What do you have in mind? I was thinking 200 or 250 for maybe 35 or 40. I'd, I'd split 200 for 40. Okay. Well, you just knocked me out. I was going to offer a lot less. I'm out. That still, that still creates a, a bit of a vacuum there. Uh, I mean, I guess, uh, you know, assuming that um, Mark and Robert don't, you know, always vote in step together. Marks are out. Nikki has an offer from they Kevin for $100,000 for 35% of her company, and another from Robert and Mark for $200,000 for 40%. I want you to know that's something a, that's about a me. That's a difficult thing. But you have to remember, too, like, this is an idea. I mean, she, yeah, she was able to, to get uh, 500 customers at an average of 40 to uh 42 dollars a month i mean that's twenty one thousand a month right i mean that's nothing to sneeze eight times that by 12 you had two hundred fifty two thousand uh, dollars a year just in that soft launch opening you know there so it's uh it's not it's not it's nothing to sneeze at as far as uh the amount of money that'll come in and as long as they get their acquisition costs for the for the customer base down and the acquisition costs of the toys, they will be sitting very well. I am Mr. Toy. I sold my company to Mattel. I know it. I lived in Fisher Price for a year. Those toys are my friends. I speak toy. I just think you need more capital. You got to get going faster. That's going to be your only advantage. And you need someone with internet hyper growth experience. Okay. It wouldn't hurt to start partnering with some of the toy companies, let me tell you. And there's two that own 90%, and I know all their board members. Mark and I are offering you 200000 I I think the partnering thing, you know, from a cross point makes sense. But again, like I was just saying, like, if, if I can go and get my toys in lots from, you know, from people, um, fix them up or, or whatever you got to do to get them ready to be able to be shipped out, um... I, I think it's, it should be a pretty slam dunk thing for uh, for not needing the, the, the toy industry's blessing. For 40%. Okay. Mr. O'Leary's offering you 100000 for 35%. What are you going to do? Robert and Mark have Albany for 35% for his here. experience. Where are you at relationship Where are you at relationship-wise with Fisher Price and Mattel? They're never going to forget me, put it to you that way. <laughs> Are you holding Would anybody? a thousand for 35? I'm thinking. I'm thinking. 
Um, I don't know if you'd be willing to go up anymore on your number without moving that percentage. Um, What's, uh, well, I compete with myself. What it, do you seems like, it seems like she's uh, holding her breath uh, while she's talking there. I, I mean, it's a lot of pressure and a little bit of time. Nikki, I don't think the relationship with the toy companies... Oh, really? yeah? You don't think that matters? No, no, no. Hang on a sec. I never said it didn't matter. It's not critical to get going. And somebody who's been through an online service okay. that's built around subscriptions, someone who does business with Netflix and knows how they work, and other online services, okay. that is what's going to get you over the top. We can get the door opening to Fisher-Price or any toy company. Once we have the customers, I mean, my company secures and services some of the largest internet sites in the world. Once we have the customers, trust me, there's no problem going to Mattel and these you know, toy companies. There's so many they guys that provide internet logistics services. There's a whole industry full of guys like this. <laughs> yeah, but obviously they're not as big uh, or eventually as big a names as, as these two. Dime a dozen. Uh, I think I, I know don't. exactly how to build this business and exactly how to exit it, which matters to you. That's how you actually make money. I would like $200,000. Um, I, I was going to ask you guys if you'd consider 35% for $200,000. Are you saying if I match their offer? Well, pushing, the pushing down uh, to 35%, I mean, that's... Oh, math. But, I mean, that... that... That helps at least because, you know, yeah, it's only 5%. But again, you, you add the, the ABC cut on top of that, plus uh, you're splitting the, the 35% in, in half. Uh, so you're putting yourself in a position where you're not giving uh, too much control, uh, potential control uh, out to these people. With me? Because you also have to remember, like, they could, they could go to the pe other people who own the shares and be like, hey, we'll buy you out. And and then then they really do have control because you don't own it, so you 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 know you, there's very little self interest there. Done. How about this? I like what this guy brings, so I'll split it with him. I'll do that. <laughs> we have a deal. Done. Wow. Wow. Oh, uh, and so and so the saga of Robert getting like wiped out of deals uh, begins and uh, in, in Shark Tank history. It is sad. I, li I like Robert a lot. Uh, it's a shame he gets knocked out so often. You found respect. without even looking at him. Give me someone that you know happened. I mean, they are they are sharks now. Sharks. They are sharks now. I've never seen anyone like them. One of them. So, uh, what happened to Toy Guru, right? So let me pull up. Uh, let me pull up thing here. So it says it was funded uh, by the group. You know, the group of sharks. Uh, they ended up raising two hundred fifty thousand dollars in two funding rounds, but after some months, they had to shut the company down. So the problem that they ran into, according to this article, uh, was that the f um, it wasn't the funding, but it was the logistics part of shipping the toys, uh, at, you know, across the country was really the problem that they ran into. Um, and and it, they just could not charge enough money to be able to make it work. Uh, from a from a cost perspective, when you added shipping, so having the toys local made more sense, and uh, you know they they weren't able to get the price down as much, and eventually uh, it it did fold, which is which is a shame. That's the, uh, you know it's a great idea, um, but you know I, it almost makes me wonder if like someone like Amazon could get away with doing this with the distribution network that they have and the the delivery drivers that they have and the amount of returns and toys and products that they have if they if they started up like a toy rental service uh if they could easily be successful at it. i i kind of kind of tend to think they would because they like like i said they have the distribution they had the delivery built right in and they uh they have the toys that are already bought and or used so it's it's you know it might actually, it could work on their part. But anyway, uh, thank you for, for watching this episode 
of the Super Joe Pardo Show, uh, Biz Coach Reacts. I need you to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm so we get this hand into the hands of more entrepreneurs. And uh, check me out on all social media at Super Joe Pardo. Go check out how we can work together on growing your profit over at superjoepardo.com. I want you to make it a magical day and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.